The primary goals for the Broomfield data center design were to work within the constraints of the existing real estate, right size the load, optimize the workflow, and improve efficiencies with constantly varying workload. We deployed our innovative pod architecture that allows us to dramatically compress our footprint while still enabling future capacity growth. The highest density of these sections includes 19 fully scaled pods supporting a wide variety of platforms. Like Santa Clara, we leverage both Liebert and APC closely coupled cooling products. Since Sun is one of the leading companies building solutions to keep pace with or exceed Moore's Law, we know the densities will increase and we plan for it on all levels. In the high density areas, we are able to double the average cooling and power capacity without major construction. The pods are designed to accommodate average loads of 8 kilowatts per cabinet, but can accommodate rack loads up to 30 kilowatts. All other areas are also able to increase their densities in the same manner. The key is to future-proof the site to avoid significant costs and disruptive construction in the future. This approach requires 10 to 15 percent of additional investment in pipework and floor space to enable these modules to snap into place. We believe this investment to future-proof our Colorado site will pay for itself in less than a year, just like Santa Clara. The Colorado site is one of the most unique in Sun's portfolio. We moved IT, services, software, and learning functions into this data center, but most of the users and equipment came from the storage R&D business unit. There is an abundance of high-density compute and storage solutions in turn mixed with large, complex tape drive products. A very important component of this project was to optimize the workflow through the data center. Unlike many lights out data centers, there are hundreds of users operating in this data center on a daily basis. Along with these challenges, there are also structural limitations of the building we were moving into. We needed to ensure that this challenge wouldn't deter our modular strategy. The structural limitations of the building were one of our top concerns. Every piece of equipment that was moving into this space was captured on data sheets to calculate the initial and future cooling and power requirements, as well as weight loads. Equipment placement from a weight perspective and overall process flow was critical. These calculations allowed us to concentrate equipment and strategically reinforce the floor to handle the weight loads, while optimizing the support connections to tap into power and cooling feeds. This approach has kept us within the structural boundaries of the building while still enabling us to move equipment throughout the five different floors. The power of modularity was preserved. But another interesting challenge surfaced as we moved one of the most complex configurations in the site. Our largest tape configuration has 10 SL8500 libraries acting as one virtual storage device. At 61 feet is about the same size as a large tractor trailer. Each of these SL8500s can have up to 64 one terabyte T10K tape drives with 1,448 tape storage slots per unit, this configuration can have a storage capacity of over 14 petabytes. To put this into perspective, every book in every library in the U.S. would total two petabytes of storage. It takes two days to move a single SL8500. It has to be broken down, shipped, reassembled on the new site, and then calibrated. While we were assembling the 10-string, we saw that the floor was flexing three inches across the entire 61 feet. We had never experienced this in our other sites with raised floors. We were able to solve this challenge by modeling one-inch metal feet that allowed us to level the libraries. The new data center design on a concrete slab in the upper floors of the building allowed us to solve this potential problem before it surfaced at a customer site. The Sun Broomfield site already had a large central chiller plant serving the campus, but it did not have enough capacity to accommodate the incoming load or the future expansions. The planning exercises to calculate the actual loads for each phase, as well as hardware replacement efforts enabling compression, allowed us to shrink the new chiller plant requirements. We added an additional chiller plant to the loop and increased the cooling capacity by 1,000 tons, enabling 2,200 tons for phase one with expansion to 2,700 tons in phase two, serving the new data center space. These highly efficient chillers match the load to only use the energy that is required by the equipment truly sustainable. When more capacity is required in the future, we simply snap in another highly efficient, variable speed driven chiller. In Santa Clara, we used a mixture of power delivery products including large floor mount PDUs and Starline Busway from Universal Electric. If we had to do it over again, we would have deployed Busway everywhere. For Colorado, we decided to use Starline Busway exclusively on all floors. 
The Starline Bus is an extremely flexible and simple product that allows power changes for any type of outlet to be completed in a matter of minutes rather than days, weeks, or months. We are able to snap in single 110 cans right next to 100 amp three-phase cans. We selected 225 amp three-phase busway throughout the entire site so the modular power cans can be reused in any location. The high-density pods were built to allow additional feeds on each side of the busway so we can double the capacity simply by splitting it. Equipment ranging from less than a kilowatt to over 30 kilowatts of load can easily be integrated into a pot in a matter of minutes. As we mentioned, right sizing is very important at Sun. We have global standards for resiliency requirements. Our IT sites are Tier 3 and our engineering sites are Tier 1, but they both adhere to the same design approach, but with varying levels of redundancy. Our engineering policy for Tier 1 is to provide UPS and generator power back up to about 15% of our equipment load. For Colorado, we augmented the existing backup system with a 1200 kVA UPS that we've tuned to 900 kilowatts using four 240 kilowatt flywheels. This UPS utilizes a parallel online system that is 96% efficient at half load and 97% efficient at full load. It makes use of flywheel energy storage for infinite discharge cycles and no lead acid battery replacements. This solution has a low total cost of ownership in comparison to the battery-based systems, less power is needed for the support load, and more power is available for the IT load in the data center. This is the first site in which we have successfully moved the intermediate distribution frames and supporting network equipment from centralized switching rooms into the pods themselves. When rack power, cooling, and system densities increase, so does the cabling. We have found that 20 rack pods have enough connectivity requirements to fill two redundant 480 port access layer switches. It no longer makes sense to run thousands of networking connections to a centralized room. Just like cooling, we have moved the networking equipment to the source of the density, dramatically decreasing the amount of cabling required. Another unique aspect of this site is the mainframe connectivity requirements. While we have been able to decrease the overall length of copper cabling, we still have a large requirement for mainframe FICON and ESCON fiber connections. All of the floors are interconnected to enable different equipment to be utilized by numerous groups rather than replicating the environments or requiring constant movement of equipment. This modularity enables pods to be building blocks inside of rooms with a highly integrated connectivity to enable the larger system as a whole. The team had to design for 40,000 fiber and 20,000 copper ports connecting areas across five floors. It was a complex job, but extremely important to enable daily activities in my business unit. In total, the connections equated to 240,000 feet of environmental monitoring, 750,000 feet of copper, and 450,000 feet of fiber for roughly 270 miles of infrastructure cabling for the building. Just imagine how much larger it would have been if we had centralized rather than distributed the connectivity. Kind of